Hello everyone, welcome back. On today's episode, we're gonna go ahead and implement our login functionality. So on the previous episode, uh, we created this registration page and it all worked well. So today we're gonna go ahead and allow our users to actually log in into the account. So let's get started. Uh, I have already gone ahead and created the routes for our login page. This is gonna be exactly identical to what we did for the registration page. So basically uh, I have a route for viewing the login page and I have named it login and then we have a post request for on with the same login URL and I'm passing it to the authenticate method on our controller. So let's go ahead and I'll actually copy these two. So for the most part, we're going to be doing the exact same thing with it with registration. Authenticate. I think I made a typo, so I'll just copy it from here. Yep. I forgot the T and so that's going to be it. I'll remove this for now. Well, we don't need it for now. So, and instead of going to the register view file, I'll go to the login blade file. Okay. And I have already created the blade file for it. It's going to be empty. So I'll copy the register page. And I actually, I think I'm just going to uh, kind of repurpose our register page. I'll get rid of confirm password and I'll get rid of name and instead of register i rename this to login i'll rename this to login and this one will be register here and i think we are good to go i think we have added everything we need okay so yeah we're good to go so let's go see if it works or not i'll click on login page yep the page looks nice we have a register here which takes us to the register page so and i already have the validation code so we are good to go let's go ahead and Test this out and make sure the route is working. So I'll say DD uh, request all and see all is working fine. So I'll say test, test, or it has to be a valid email, of course. And yep, as you can see, it is working. So now we can go ahead and implement our login logic. And I actually don't remember what was the username I created. I think it was test at test.com we can check the database where did i put our database yep it's over here so i'll open it up yeah it was test at test.com okay so what do we need to do for our uh, registration so first step as always we need to do the validation so i'll reuse the validation code we had for our login the only thing i need to remove is this unique because we are not we are no longer creating a new user so Obviously, this unique will always will always fail if it is a valid email. So I'll get rid of that. And then for the purpose of actually checking if the user has entered a valid details or not, Laravel actually has a helper function we can use. And basically, it's called auth. So you can use this auth helper or you can use an auth facade. So there are two ways of uh, using this helper method. But I think I'll go ahead and I'll use the auth helper because it's a simpler syntax and it has a function installed called attempt. And as you can see uh, from the VS code uh, highlights, it takes in a credentials array and then a remember for the remember me if you want to implement that. And for the credentials, you basically can pass in the email and the password or you can just pass in our validated array. Okay, what we just validated. And if the user details were correct, there is a user with an email matching our database it will go ahead and automatically log in the user and return us true. So we can actually put this inside an if statement. So if it returns true, uh, we know the user was logging uh, authenticated properly. If not, we can just redirect them uh, back. Okay. Now, uh, one thing we can do, so I'll say return, redirect, and I'll redirect the user to the dashboard page, uh, route, route dashboard and I'll also pass in a message say I logged in successfully and that's a lot of s and f okay and then one more thing we need to do is clear the cache in case we had sorry clear the session so in case we had any sessions from the previously logged in user so uh, for this one you can use basically the request helper again and then say session this will give you all your sessions and then you can just call in uh, regenerate and VS code is helping us with the auto complete, but that's basically all we need to do. We need to clear the session, regenerate it 
and then redirect the user. And Laravel will automatically go ahead and log the user, store basically the details we need to know if the user has successfully logged in or not. So it's very easy for us. And then if it was unsuccessful, I'll redirect the user back to the login page so we can show them the errors, okay? So I'll redirect them back to the login page. Now we were using this flash messages for our success messages, but in order to send an error, Laravel actually has a method for this. We can say with errors, and then, uh, you know, you can pass in any kind of error you want. So I'll say, uh, here we can say email because we have an email and password. So I'll send an error message for our email. Uh, failed, no matching user found with the provided email and password. Okay, and this should get the job done for now. We can do something else later, but I think this should work. So let's go ahead and test it and see if you're actually able to log in successfully or not. So I'll hit submit and password confirmation does not match. Yeah, I also need to remove the password confirmation from our validation rules. So I'll go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and test it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Was it one, two, three, four? I, I actually don't remember the password. So let's create a new user. I'll call it YouTube, uh, Alex at test dot com and then one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight i don't even remember what we did on the previous episode so sorry guys about that let's go and log in here alex at test.com one two three four five six seven eight and you can see it says logged in successfully so we have actually implemented our login how do we actually check if the user is logged in throughout our application so first of all i want to remove this a login and register page, right? Links. And I want to show the user's uh, username here instead of this profile, right? I want to say welcome, whatever your name is. So let's go ahead and learn how we can do that in our blade file, okay? Laurel actually makes this very easy for us to do. I'll go to our uh, layout, I believe. Uh, oh no, we need to go to our nav. Yes, yeah, so I'll find our navigation. So Laurel actually has some helper directives. One of them is called auth. And what this does is it basically checks if the user is logged in or not. So if the user is logged in, it will return true. And whatever you put inside will be only shown when the a user is logged in. Okay, so that's it. So if the user is logged in, actually, I need to put this here. If the user is logged in, I want to show the profile. And then if the user is a guest, so there is another one called guest. And this guest tells us if a user is not logged in or they are, well, visiting as a guest, right? So they still haven't logged into the system. So it's kind of the opposite of ought. And I'll format this. So yeah, if you use guest, you can basically check if the user is uh, still not logged in. And then you can use ought to check if the user has logged in. These two will help you out majority of the time. So let's go ahead and reload the page. And you can see we are only able to see the profile, okay? So it is working. Although we don't have a logout, I'll, we will implement that in a second. And instead of this profile, I'll actually want to display the user's name. So how do we get the users, the current logged in user's information? So for this, a Laravel injects an odd class to our blade files. And this odd has a static method called user. It's a function and it will return to you the current logged in user. And then you can basically uh, access any of the properties on that user. So I'll say name and that's it. So that's how we can get the user's name in our uh, blade files, okay? Let's go ahead and do reload and you can see we are getting YouTube because that's the name of the user I just created or we can maybe display their email, okay? So as you can see, we are able to access the current logged in user with this setup. So it is working. Now that we have our login, we also need to add the ability to log out because it's kind of annoying that we are logged in and we are we cannot log out, right? We have to manually delete our uh, cookies. So let's go and implement that. It's going to be very easy. I'll go ahead and I'll set up a new post route. I call it logout, logout, and I'll also give it a name so we can easily access it if we ever need to. And I'll define the function here, public function, 
a log out. And basically, whenever we want to log out, we uh, we need to clear all the users' sessions and cookies, and then redirect them back to some page. For example, our uh, dashboard page. Okay. Now, for this process, Laravel the auth helper function we use it has a, another method for logging out. So we can say auth log out. This is built in, so it will log out or remove any information related to the current logged user. And just to be safe, we can remove kind of clear our uh, sessions as well and for this one generally this is what you need to do so just use the request get the sessions we can invalidate any existing sessions we have and then we can call regenerate token and that's it and once we have done that we can just redirect the user back to any page we want i guess we can redirect them to the dashboard why not yeah, i'll just take this Copy it from there and I'll redirect the user back to the dashboard page and I say logged out, logged out success fully. And that is it guys. So it just takes a few lines of code to log out the user and you're good to go. Okay. So now that we have done that, let's go ahead and add this to our navigation. So if the user is logged in, I'll add a secondary link to our logout page, I'll say, actually this needs to be a button, but for now I say, let's do it this way. Okay, so I'll say log out, and then I'll add a form here, and I say action route logout, and then method has to be post, so I say post, as always, we shouldn't forget the CSRF token. We can close our form and then maybe put a button here. And yeah, let's see if this works or not. I guess I give it the type submit as well. All right, it does look very ugly. So I'll give it some bootstrap classes. I say BTN, BTN danger. And then I'll also give it BTN small. So it's a bit small. I don't want it to be overly big. And as you can see, we now have kind of a simple uh, logout button. So nothing crazy. I'll hit it. And we were logged out. And as you can see, the navigation links change from profile to login and register. So it is working and we have successfully kind of implemented the three core basic uh, functionalities we need which is register login and log out of course you, you can implement forget password reset password all those things or even two-factor authentication but this should get the ball rolling uh, although for majority of application you may never actually implement it yourself laravel has built-in uh, kits which actually do that for you so there is something called laravel jet stream i will probably make a course on it later on and it actually automates all of these for us. We don't even need to implement our own login and register. It has all of those combined, reset password, two-factor authentication, uh, you know, all of those things included with Laravel Jetstream, but it's good to know how to code it yourself so you can understand tools like Jetstream and how they work in case you want to customize them later on. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and subscribe if you still haven't. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.